the we've been doing the um, contradictions in the Gospels. Well, I want to take a just brief, uh, tonight's lesson is going to be very brief. We're going to look at not so much a contradiction as something that is just, um, well, I didn't understand it um, for a long time. And that's what I call the mystery of Christmas. <laughs> um, in Luke chapter 2, it it's the famous thing that the angels say, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among uh, people who whose God's favor is upon or whatever. Okay, so it's that part that never made sense to me. Everybody quotes it around Christmas time. And it's like, oh, it's a magical time of year. And it's like, what does that, what does it mean? You know, so that's so what we're going to look real at, at real quickly here. There we go. Uh, starting here. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So let's start with the basic problem of this passage. Jesus didn't bring peace at his birth. There was still, you know, crap going on in his birth. He didn't bring peace during his life. There were still wars and crap going on during his life. And he didn't bring peace at his after his death. In fact, Jesus' death actually ushered in what's called the birth pains in Old Testament prophecy and New Testament prophecy too. And what the birth pains are is the beginning of the end. So there's uh, global wars, uh, global disease, global famine, uh, persecution, and those things will only get worse. I mean, we've seen some of those things in the past couple years. We've seen, if you go over history over the past 2,000 years, you've seen them as there too. Um, and uh, things obviously seem to be uh, mounting a little bit. <laughs> COVID, for instance, regardless of how serious you think it was, it did shut down the entire world's economy. It's kind of a, kind of a big thing there, you know, and, and um, so whereas you didn't see a whole lot of people actually die from COVID, you did see a lot of impact of the virus, regardless. And so when you look in Revelation, and it's talking about, you know, the mark of the beast and about, you know, the global economy and all this different stuff, you, you saw a little bit of a foreglimpse of it with COVID, I think, um, or foreshadowing, I guess you could say. And so we're left with the problem that Jesus didn't bring peace. So what does this mean? Glory to God in the highest heaven on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. So... In order to answer what this verse is actually saying, we have to ask a question, what is being said? So the most commonly quoted uh, way this is said is in from the KJV, which is very vague, insanely vague. It says this, peace, goodwill toward men. What does that mean? <laughs> like, it, And not only that, but what does that statement actually have to do with Jesus' birth? goodwill toward men, what does that have anything to do with Jesus coming? Like, or is it just simply a pronouncement? Like, hey, I'm feeling good today, so goodwill towards men. I'm just offering this statement, this this one-time blessing for everybody because I'm just feeling so good. And it's like, no, I, that's not what's happening here. This this statement does have something to do with Jesus. Um, and the thing is, people say this every single Christmas time, like it's a magical time of peace. Just by saying it, you're going to, you know, there's not going to be problems during Christmas. Well, if you've lived for any amount of time, you know, people do still die at Christmas time. People do still lose their homes at Christmas time. Christmas time isn't like nothing bad can happen because we've just declared peace. It's just, it, that's not how it works. Um, and so it seems more or less like a pointless statement. So the second uh, thing that this could possibly mean is peace to all people. God is pleased with all of them. So let me kind of emphasize what that would look like. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace, peace to those on whom his favor rests. In other words, peace among all. My favor is on all of you. That's the second way it could be could be translated. So um, the problem with that is, really? God's favor is on everybody, even evil people? Like, he's like, yeah, you're killing babies. It's cool. It's fine. My favor is on you. I, I don't really see God doing that. And then all that, but it kind of, kind of begs the question... His favor is on people for all time, or just for this one, one, one moment in time. Like, what, what are you getting at here? Um, and then it also kind of conjures the question of why is God's favor on them? And what did they do to earn this favor? Like, what, what, what's going on here? So that takes us to the third, which I see as the most realistic translation of this section, which I think uh, this translation, I believe it's the NIV. Um, I think it kind of emphasizes it. Um, a lot more than the KGV did. 
So it's peace to those specific people that God's favor rests upon. Let me read it like that, and I'll, and I'll emphasize that. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to only those on whom his favor rests. That makes more sense, but then it kind of seems a little bit circular, because what you're saying is peace, which seems like favor on those who have his peace or his favor. And that's not really, you have to kind of separate those two thoughts. So his favor is not his peace. Peace on those who have his favor. So who are these specific people who have his favor would be the next question you have to ask. Any quite any ideas about that? Who are these specific people who have his favor? Anybody? Is what you're about to say something now? Yes. So uh, most broadly, the people who is being who are being discussed here would be Israel because you know Israel would be God's people. So they were carrying the law as the forerunner of the promise. So they finally get to see the promise. So there's that. Um, you know, they would be that. That would be the specific people. But um, if you're going to mention Israel, you have to mention the new Israel that would come, which you could easily just say God's people, those people who love and serve Him. Um, so glory to God and on earth peace to those on whom His favor is, and peace to those on on who who are His people. Um, so this isn't a global declaration. Then it was it was this very pointed declaration, but it also has what's called global implications. And you say, what the heck are you talking about? Just hold on. Okay, first off, what is God's favor? Any ideas? In this context, what is God's favor? It says, peace to those on whom his favor rests. So what is his favor that it would isn't, rest on us? Isn't it, you know, like, paid something to, you know, dedicated to something else? Yes, I, th I think you're on the right track. I, th I think that's part of the answer. Does anybody else have anything else that they'd like to throw in before I plow ahead? No? No? Not really? Okay. So his favor is a little bit two parts. So first off, God's favor is like his unwarranted grace and mercy to you. Okay which is culminated or climaxed in Jesus coming. Jesus coming is the ultimate expression of God's favor to us. Okay, so um, Jesus coming is God's favor resting on us. That, that is the great sign of, of favor. So remember this when you're going through hard times. You say, God, why are you not listening to my prayers? Why are you not, you know, doing, you know, all these different things? And I, Remember in all of those wonderings that Jesus is the prize. Remember that. So, now let's play through. Um, so, those who accept Jesus have gained God's favor, and peace has come to them. So, what is this peace? Because you might be thinking, okay, I've accepted Jesus. I'm not having peace right now. And we've talked about that in, in part. We've talked about that in different ways about how you know, you can't have peace if you're living in sin or if you're, you know, not reading the Bible, those kinds of things. We, we've talked about those things, so I don't really want to talk about those things again. But I, here I want to emphasize the idea of what is this peace that we get, this peace to those on whom his favor is. What is that peace? Well, Jesus clarifies um, in his ministry that, that this peace is not the peace as the world gives. Now, what that means is, how, how does the world give peace? Well, the world gives peace in a way like, Maybe you don't have trouble for a few days, just a few days of, of not having to deal with, with, with some kind of nonsense. Or maybe you conquer your enemies and you, you, you subjugate them and they, haha, now they can't rise up against me. Uh, you know, things like that are the things that people typically call peace. You know, hey, we have peace as a nation because we've outbullied all the other nations. <laughs> you know, things like that. Uh, it's things, outer things. That's how the world gives peace, outer things. You want peace in your life, you need to get rid of all the people who bother you, you need to get rid of the job that bother you. That's how the world gives peace. Well, God doesn't give peace like that. God gives peace like this. He gives peace in the midst of things. So, peace from the struggle of the law and endless works. You don't have to earn your salvation anymore. That's peace. Peace in your innermost part being. Peace of identity. There's another thing that Jesus gives peace with. So, you don't have to say, oh, I'm worthless or... You know, uh, I, I, I'm just a waste of space. Nobody likes me. All these different. Things. You don't have to ha have that because now we have peace in the identity of Christ. So long as we accept it, we can obviously, you know, decide not to listen to that. We can decide, you know, I don't need the Bible. I don't need to listen to this truth. I just come up with my own truth. In which case, we come up with our own idea of our identity. I am a useless person. I, there's there's no point in me existing. You know, we can go that route. 
But if we allow God to, he gives us that sense, that peace in our identity. That, you know, hey, I am a child of God. I'm loved. I'm forgiven. I'm accepted. Those kinds of things. So, uh, another thing that we have is peace against sin. Before we were saved, we were slaves to sin. Unfortunately, what happens is as we distance ourselves from the church, from the Bible, from prayer, from all those different good things for us, we allow sin to have another place in our life, and it we don't experience that same joy anymore because we aren't really set free from sin because we're bound again. We allow ourselves to get caught up in the world and the cares of the world and the and the temporary things that seem so looming, and it's like, well, they're not. They're not. I mean, anything we face in life is definitely you know limited. Anything. And that is the hope of Christians. Um, actually, that's one of the big hopes that, that Paul talked about quite a bit, was the hope that we have that this isn't it. It doesn't matter how bad or unfair this life is, because it is temporary. And um, so that gives us hope. <clears throat> Another thing that we have is we have the peace of heaven that is coming. We have the peace of knowing that we will live with God in his presence, his very presence. And uh, as I, as I, in a sermon I, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, we also have the thing that what we accomplish in this life is building up treasure for us in heaven. So, I mean, these are things that, that are, you know, noteworthy. Um, we also have peace of our inner being. So what that looks like is we can, ha we can go, to, go, to, go to bed at night with peace and, and lay our head down in peace and go to sleep in peace and not have to worry about things that we used to worry about when we were living in sin. We don't have to, um, you know, in here we don't have to have a storm, even though there's a storm going on out here. And we can have the peace of purpose. So knowing why we're going, where we're going. And, you know, maybe, you, maybe as I'm listening to these things, you might say, well, I don't have those now. You might not. But you will. Christianity is is for assured because we know who God is. You keep seeking God, and even if you don't have these kinds of pieces now, you keep seeking God, and you will. That's one of those things that just promised to us. And uh, now, keep in mind though, having peace doesn't mean that you are no longer going through a hard time. It is something that people kind of get a little bit confused on. So here's some ways that we could reword Luke two fourteen. The first way is glory to God in the highest, and on earth. Peace can now be found among people with whom his favor has come. This is, this is a valid way of understanding this, and I'll, and I'll say what I mean by this. Jesus' coming is God's favor, so peace can now be found because anybody can accept Jesus. So you could say, and on earth, peace can now be found among people with whom his favor has come. God's favor is now currently on the whole world by his revealing Jesus to us. So even if we don't accept it, God's favor is still resting because he has not destroyed the earth. He has not, the rapture hasn't happened, and that stuff has happened. So his, his, his favor is still resting on the earth because he's given, given Jesus and he still is offering that to all of us. And the second way that we could retranslate this in, I guess you could say in conclusion, would be glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace is given to those on whom his favor has come, or favor rests, either or. So the way is now open for God's people to have peace. God's people before didn't have peace because they were looking forward to the coming Christ. They didn't have access to the Holy Spirit like we do now. We can seek and find comfort. Back then, only a select few leadership was, was blessed with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament age, we have a whole new thing going on. Because of what Jesus did, the way is open also to receive of the Holy Spirit. So that's extra comfort that we can have if we seek it. The problem is today is Christians who just don't pray about stuff. Christians who don't believe anymore. They don't they don't seek it anymore. They're just kind of like Christian entitling. Whenever you find yourself getting to that place, you're going to have an idea like this. Oh, it's I'll never be able to get back. Eh, don't worry about it. Here's the thing. Just start reading your Bible. Start praying. And you're not going to even realize that it's doing something. And then if you just stick with it, it will do something. It's just like that. It's that easy. You're never, it's never been too long for you to get back into the Bible. So, the way is now open for, for God's people to have peace in, in the works of the law and life, that kind of stuff. So, uh, peace is a promise given to God's people, which is us, like the promise that God turns things to our good from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. That's not, that's not a promise that extends to all mankind. That's a promise that extends to us. For Christians, God, God turns things around towards good. For Christians, peace is a promise. So without Christ, that means that no, there is in fact not uh, the promise of peace.
But remember that that doesn't mean the absence of problems. We will still go through problems. So Luke chapter 2, verse 13 through 14 is the fulfillment of the Jewish law they looked forward to. It's, it's, this is the fulfillment of it. That there's now peace accessible. And um, this is what brought us, who are non-Jews, in. Is that God showed us, gave us peace and that God's favor did in fact rest. And it is hope that all can be saved. So it's not just our hope, it's the hope of what can be accomplished um, in the future of other people being saved. So, uh, before, we before we end this, I wanted to ask a question to see if you guys had anything you wanted to share. What is something that God has given you peace over in your life? life? So just something in your life, um, be it you know, something that you're going through, something in your in your thoughts, just anything. You don't have to be as descriptive as you want to. That God has given you peace in. That, I'll fail, that I will fail in school, but it's not the end. Okay. That I will fail in life. There, there will be failures. Mm -hmm. But I just got to keep getting back up and keep trying. So am I right in understanding that you were, you're saying that you were afraid of, of, of having, fa of failing? And okay. then I, I keep, I, when I first started failing classes, I got in the end. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I was just going to out, and that was going to be the end. And then I got a random email from my advisor, because mm -hmm. she had noticed my GPA was dropping. And she's like, you know, this isn't the end. We just have to drop you down to one class. Mm -hmm. She said, You'll go back up to two classes when you start doing better. She said, it's not the end of the world. Well, good. She's like, it, it, we, we have a fail state here. Mm -hmm. You know, unless, you know, something happens and I lose my federal aid, I, I, I'm going to get kicked out of school. Like, they have that fail state that And how did that make you feel when that? A lot better. Yeah. I'm not so stressed out about school now. <laughs> yeah. I'm a lot less stressed. Of course, I have English coming back up. Like, oh, no. We'll At least it's not math. <laughs> oh, I have to retake math again, too. So. <laughs> math. <laughs> Did you have something? No? no? Yes? Do you want me to come back to you? No. Okay. Eli, is there anything that some, something that God has given you peace over in your life? Anything at all? Oh, yeah. The, um, my teacher, like, reminded that I was going to be fine. I'm going to get a um, really good job. I'm going to be fine. And, uh, yeah, uh, good I was going to be a good person. 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 I was going to be a good that's great. I know for me, um, I started uh, praying a lot more than I was, and something that I have felt like I'm supposed to do for years, but I always found excuses and kept putting it off, and that's um, writing. I always felt like I was supposed to be a, a writer, but I was afraid to do it, and I thought that my books wouldn't be good, and so I just didn't try, and uh, you know, found excuses and reasons and stuff, and got caught up in and and my job and stuff like that and I um, recently just made the decision that well hey you know if I fell I fell but I gotta try and so that's what I'm doing now oh I'm sorry I didn't mean to cut you off you go ahead well good so what you're saying is you're ready to go back to a high stress job. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. Gracie? Um, probably that um, going through the Bible is any anything that sometimes happens where like I I feel like Negative and something, it, he always provides something else. Mm. Yeah. Okay. One thing I've noticed though is I've noticed that sometimes, especially with the things that God gives me peace over, if I get my eyes off of God again, it comes back again and I start getting real panicky again. And I, I started this Bible study 
and I'm, I'm gonna bring it Friday. So I think it'd be really good for when it's true. I haven't written in the book. I'm writing on a separate piece of paper for that purpose. What's um, it? Uh, what's it, it called? It's called Get Out of Your Head. By who? Uh, I don't remember the author. Oh, okay. But it's strictly about getting your mind off of like your anxiety uh -huh. and like more focusing on God inside of Philippians. Mm -hmm. And it talks specifically about you know focusing more, shifting your focus more onto God and less on like your anxiety. It's succession, but. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll get done with this in like a week. Yeah. It's taking me like two, three days per session because it really makes you stop and think. Uh, you know? and it's really detailed. Well, I good. really like it. But, and then I've started going back through the five world languages. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I really like it. But yeah. I'm starting to shift my focus yeah. back to trying to read the Bible while trying to pray. Great. Like, since we've been out of the house, like, Jamie and I've noticed since we've been out of the house, uh -huh. we don't like going back there. It is so dark in that house. Which reminds me of Have you tried turning on the light? <laughs> Just kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, there's a lot of light like, stuff in that house. So yeah. We don't like being in there at the moment. When we go to move, we're going to need some manpower. <laughs> oh, that's definitely going to be uh, Gracie? <laughs> we're going to need a lot of people to help move some uh -huh. heavy furniture. Would it be appropriate to have Pastor make an announcement? Um, we'd have to ask him for sure, but I should. I just want to tell you right now, um, if I don't come, there's a reason for that. I can't lift a lot anymore. That's right. So just yeah. so you understand, I don't. Want, like I don't want you thinking. You know, that. John, like maybe Damien, because my parents, Jamie and I, are taking my parents' bed, uh -huh. and that thing takes like five or six people. Oh yeah. Oh, well. oh my even gosh. Even broken down. Do you remember even our bed took? It's like really that's hard. it's huge and it's heavy. Yeah. And so uh, I would definitely ask ask uh, ask pastor, you know. I was like, is that appropriate, Dad? Because we, the more people we have, the quicker it'll right. be. Right. And the quicker we can get out. Right. Yeah. I don't know. We don't have a date yet. That's kind of why I'm kind of holding off by asking, because we don't know. Because we, I think we're going to take like a weekend and just clear the house. Yeah. Like, it's all happening. Yeah. Do you notice how you you plan for something for a long time and plan for, and then when it actually happens, you're not prepared. I mean, think about working on it for so long, and it just yeah. it feels like we're treading water. I mean, think about like the, your your grandma. I mean, we knew that she was going for like forever. And, like we thought she was going to pass like eight years ago. Right. Like she's been holding me. Like even the day she passed, when we went and saw her in the hospital, I'm like she still has days left. Yeah. Because. That's just how she was. She, she just yeah. kept surprising us. We thought she was a loser. And then it happened. And then it happened. And, and it you were just so... It caught, yeah. it caught me so off guard. It sent me into guidance. Yeah. Like, it it felt like a smack to the chest. Yeah. And my brother didn't really shock me that much. Huh. Because I was there. I saw it. I experienced it. Uh -huh. I seen how bad his safety was. Like. With my grandma, it, it, I kind of expected it. Mm, yeah. But it still kind of caught me off guard how fast it happened. So, uh, next week we will be watching uh, Why I Trust the Bible, the, the 10th uh, video uh, on the on those Mount, Mount series. 